the music from last week on <laughs> it's just so fun though you know it's a it's always a celebration in here we're all champions at painting our nails right right who's a nail artist you're a nail artist menchie's a nail artist nail artist menchie where you at there you are okay we've got mascot menchie Looking cute as always in her little donut. Menchie's still wearing donut nails, you know, but we've moved on. We've moved on from uh, the glazed donut trend to the chrome trend, which, uh, you know, is a, a preference. <laughs> because it's more obvious. I want the most obvious nails. We'll, we'll, wow, I can't speak. We'll work for nail polish. I'm stuck in bed with COVID. Oh no! Happy to be distracted by the stream today. Hope you're feeling better. Hope you got your tea. Speaking of tea, let's get our tea out. I gotta get my tea. Tea time. Can I get some tea in the chat? Tea, please. Tea time. Mm. I am drinking black English breakfast tea with oat milk, like a, a lot of oat milk, <laughs> like 
is that tea in there or is it just a, a glass of oat milk um it's delicious it's kind of what i drink every morning you can find my tea thank you wow stream elements is working today amazing i like how we have competing bots if you put exclamation tea in the chat you get where i get my tea at my uh, affiliate link also you get 10 percent off your order if you add four of my picks to your cart and you also get night the other bot telling you like a tea collection page but i i can't turn this one off i don't i can't figure it out <laughs> i because it's for our discord so like that that trigger works in discord but for some reason it's also doing it here and i can't stop it so we're just gonna have both competing bots bot wars war of the ai it's uh yes oat milk with a teaspoon of tea how long does oat milk last in the fridge i mean i go through it really fast so i'm never worried about that <laughs> i don't know i mean it should say on the carton all right okay Tea, nails, menchi, fun music. We're just gonna chill today. Today is Saturday. Welcome on in to everyone. Hope you guys had a fantastic week. I did. I mean, it, you know, it was quite stressful last week. Uh, if you missed my gaming stream, I kind of went over it. But um, yeah, l last Saturday was an event. <laughs> it was definitely an event for my computer. I'm happy to report that I think my computer's okay. So I don't think that my computer will randomly shut off this time in the middle of stream. Imagine though, if it did, it would, it would be because I'm doing nail art and the universe does not want that anymore. So I think we're good. And yeah, today I would just like to do some nail art. Who is she? Oh, I'm ignoring Ben's chat. Ben, what did you say? I didn't even see you. Did you know they are coming out with the chicken Big Mac in Canada? Does Jen know about this? I don't know. Are they? What's a chicken Big Mac? A chicken dressed as a Big Mac? A chicken chicken dressed as a Big Mac. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ben, for this contribution. I love the staying on topic. <laughs> Did Menchie shut it off? No, it was an application error and a... a power system failure the computer was like stop it i'm shutting you off yeah sorry i turned down the music first time catching a live welcome on in i had a rough week but i have tea <laughs> that's what i say in this stream now so things are looking up big mac except chicken and not a burger so it just means like it's the, the dressing right it's a it's a chicken dressed as a big mac in a chicken in disguise. Won't be chatting much as I'm doing my nails today. Me too. I mean, I won't be typing much, but I'll be chatting. Thank you, Tanzo. Hi, Simply. Love your cat ears. You were a great example of perseverance and grit last week. You are amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was quite the level of stress, you know, but, but we did it. We did it. But I also feel like personally I was a little bit thrown off and that maybe I didn't do the usual like good explanations that I usually do. I don't know. You know, you know how it is. You always do something and then something goes wrong and then you like replay it in your head 10 times and you're just like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> that was me after last weekend. So this is like a redo, except not really, you know, because the, the collection's already live and launched, and a lot of people have already started receiving them for those that have shipped out already. Shipped out already. Um, the team is still shipping out, so if you haven't got a fulfillment notification, please, please hold, uh, because it's a 8 to 10 fulfillment day range, depending on when you order. Um, sorry four orders placed during large lunches so it makes sense that not everyone has got their shipping notification because there's been five shipping days since launch so far but some people have started receiving it so i thought why not why not do some nail art with the one coat chrome collection i love seeing your guys already doing some nail art or just trying it out and i just thought it would be fun to do that with this, you know, little, who, who is shocked that I picked such a simple box? I know. I don't know if you saw the collection box behind the scenes. 
it's on Instagram and YouTube Shorts already on Hollow Tacos page. And I went with the simplest option, and honestly, it was a lot of Ben, Ben fluence, because Ben was like, this is the one. And I was like, actually, you're right. How are you right? Thank you, Asher. This is my first live, but I have been watching your vids for years since the beginning. I am now 17. Oh my God, what were you before? <laughs> like 10. <laughs> Thank you so much. I tried out my Chrome collection last night and I was so surprised at how fast it dried. Yes, they dry so fast. Like that's why you kind of have to like, you know, work quickly with painting your nails because they do dry fast. But when they dry, like they dry. They're very unlike normal lacquer. They behave differently. Yours arrived today, woo! Can't wait to use it, you got yours Thursday, you got yours? Okay, a lot of people have them. The box is satisfying. I had a bad week at work and rewarded myself with the box. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Hi, Simply. Hi, Apollo. I got my first order of Holo Taco. I live in Greece, so I asked my aunt to, to order it in Zambia and she sent it to me. Shout out to your aunt. That's so nice. I was actually born in 2005. Oh my God, that's when I went to prom. I just posted a short the other day. <laughs> of me at prom and it was like 2005 wow isn't that so weird people were born after the year 2000 huh <laughs> what <laughs> remember the movie ants yeah i'm old enough to remember the movie ants You put me in a prominent place in your nail trend highlight video and I got like three texts about it from friends who saw me. So thanks, queen. You're welcome. <laughs> I already have my box out to play. Let's go, Cass. People are still being born, really? That's so weird. I, d I don't understand. All right. So we're gonna do some nail art. I know, shocking, I never do nail art. My nails are naked and ready for it. I did a nail oil soak last night since I was like, okay, well, I might as well take off my nail polish last night and then just like soak my nails in nail oil. And by that, I mean like, just like load it up with a lot, like a giant bottle and then wear gloves to bed. So I, I feel like I should do that more often. That is kind of a good thing I recommend for general nail care is just doing the occasional nail soak and you just like soak your, like throw the oil on, put it under your nail, you know, over everything and then wear the glove to bed so it doesn't, it doesn't get everywhere. So that's what I did and my nails feel really good right now. They've just been going through so much, you know, they've been through a lot. So they're ready to go. A little oily though, so I don't know how the base will stick, but whatever, it's fine. Dude, I can't believe I have to work in an hour, but this stream makes me feel a lot less anxious about it. Thank you, bingo. Bingus bongus. <laughs> oh, I hope, you know, just remember that uh, the work day will end. That's what I used to do. <laughs> I was like, when I worked at in certain retail spaces, I'd be like, I know this is gonna be over in four hours <laughs> or whatever. What kind of glove? I just use a cotton glove. I know some people use more of a plasticky glove, but I kind of prefer the cotton because it's a little bit breathable. I just feel like my hand gets too sweaty. Like I just can't sleep with it, but the cotton glove is fine. All right, what's on? Okay, well, you, you guys already know. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Manchi. No, hold on, hold on. So, as you know, we've got the new One Coat Chrome Collection, which I mentioned in last stream, is really good for nail art. And that's because you can use it to do line work because it's really opaque. So one other good thing about One Coat polishes, such as like a One Coat Black or like a really um, uh, thick and opaque creme, usually the darker colors will, will lend its way to that. But now also the one coat chromes is you can do them to do nail art over other things. So like this, for example, is just like one swipe of World's First, the new silver over top of black. And this is like the opposite. 
So just in the same way that one coat black is really good for those who, you know, want to do nail art, they want to do some dots, they want to do some line work, they want to do some vinyl work, whatever it is, one coat, cr one coat chromes are the same in that they work really well to put over other things as opposed to shearer polishes or um, like a, a hollow barista bundle polish. Not that there's anything wrong with like, you know, having a buildable polish like a hollow glitter, a, the crushed hollow formula. It's just they do different things. So this type of formula can be, or sorry, it is opaque in one coat if you just want to paint the nail. But if you're into nail art and you want to have a little bit of fun, you can also use it for that purpose. So I like to have a balance in my collection. It's kind of impossible for every single nail polish to be one coat. It doesn't really make sense because uh, then you would never have hollow glitter. You would never have like a crushed hollow. You would never have unicorn skins. It just, you know, it makes sense depending on what the pigment is. And I think every person's collection should be a bit balanced. You should have some one coat polishes that are great for full coverage, that are great for nail art. And then you should also have some fun buildable polishes like a hollow glitter or a frosted metal or like a crushed hollow or even some linear hollows that are more pastel-y, you're gonna need a couple coats. So it really just depends on what you're in the mood for. There's advantages and disadvantages to all different types of formulas. But one thing I really like about introducing this new formula is that you can like do some fun things with it and put less effort because I don't need to trace on the lines more than once. Apologize if I missed a few things. You got your box mushroom lady, woo! Some people have tested them for stamping. I do not stamp. I refuse to stamp. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not doing it anymore. You know, I'm retired from trying. I, I earned that right. But I have seen people do it. Actually, if there's anyone in the Simply Discord now who has done it and put it in the Manny Gallery, I could totally pull that. I'm not sure. I saw someone on Instagram, I think, and I, I reposted it on my Instagram. Was that Instagram? Or was it our, face our new Facebook group? I can't remember. I don't know where I see things anymore. But here, if anyone in this chat has successfully done stamping and they've already got the One Coat Chrome collection and they have a photo to demo, go ahead and throw it in the Manny Gallery in the official Simply Neological Discord and I will see if I I can pull that up. You can do that at any time. I'll, I'll check back. Just ordered the silver and some new hollow. Woo, Ashley B world's first. A new generation of nail artists can try to fail out water marble. That's me. I'm the new generation. I'm generation W. We're winning at water marbling, except winning by not trying. The sponging with chrome is looking fabulous. See, I actually didn't have good results with that. I will show you. And I kind of want to try that again live on my, on my nail. So this was me attempting to gradient. I had world's first as the base, and then I used pink steel and iron violet, the pink and purple to try and do sponge. Now, I will just say, doing gradients on a wheel, it's really hard, like it just, I don't know, it just doesn't work, because you don't have the flexibility of like moving around the nail. But I did try it on my thumb, and I didn't think it looked that good, like it wasn't that shiny. See how it's like a bit, it's a bit dull? Maybe my light's looking, make, making it look shinier than it is. But I kind of want to try again, just maybe it was a fluke, you know, sometimes that happens. Oh, someone shared it. Okay, let me let me grab this here. Thank you for sharing. Someone put this in my Discord, but it's, but it was actually from my Facebook groups. <laughs> so yes, we have a new official safe uh, simply Facebook group. It is the only official simply analogical related Facebook group run by me. It's called All Things Simply. We're currently setting it to private, and then you have to be approved. Uh, but you know, go ahead and answer the questions, and you'll be approved. So yeah, someone was curious about stamping the new collection. I was curious. Cool. So they tried. So I guess it's the colors over top of the silver. See, I'm also interested in seeing the chromes over top of like a creme or like a black or something really simple. So you could see just how chrome stamp over top of like a solid creme. But yeah, excited to see more people's... Hello? <laughs> excited to see more people do more things with this i also think like hey there's so many talented nail artists in this world that you know 
actually do nail art on the regular. <laughs> so this was me just like doing some quick stuff when I was experimenting. I feel like there's so many other ideas and things you can do. I've seen like four water marbles now. I think they're incredible. Um, I, I really want to see more people do like this kind of a thing. I, I feel like I kind of want to do this today. I did like a really messy job there. But that was just freehand with the brush. Just doing like an arched kind of layer, one, one coat at a time and working down. I think there's a lot of opportunity here for doing kind of like blended rainbow swirls. Maybe you can make decals out of it so you can be a bit more controlled in how it's gonna look. There's some classy opportunity for like nails like this. Okay, hello. It's like Great Gatsby-ish. Colette's water marble is so pretty. Does she have a picture of it somewhere? I'll try and look. You're just watching me type. <laughs> like, where did she put it? It's in her Discord? I'm not gonna grab it from someone else's, but like, did she post it on her Twitter or something? That's Melons. Yeah, so Melons is amazing. But did my Simple Little Pleasures post one? Cause she did, did she do it on stream? So I don't know if she like posted a picture of it. I'll, I'll see if I can take a look here. You look at that. Um, simple. Oh shit. Why did it log me out of Twitter? I don't remember my password. <laughs> okay, I don't think she posted a picture on Twitter, but there's just a a link to her stream. Okay. All right, well, anyways, My Simple Little Pleasures is a wonderful nail artist who streams on Twitch, and I did see it on her stream, but I don't know if there's just like a picture floating out there. But she, she was using the chromes. Yeah, a few people have successfully watermarbled but it won't be me. <laughs> I've seen talk of a chrome hack of putting a matte taco over chrome and then a glossy taco. It's supposed to blur the brush marks. I think doing this though would dull the chrome because putting the matte taco on it kind of does dull the chrome, which I already tested. So like this is no taco. This is matte taco plus menchie hair. It kind of dulls it, like makes it more satin. So even putting a glossy taco over a matte taco, yeah, it's gonna make it shinier again, but you're still gonna have an underlying dulling effect that I don't think is ever gonna bring it back to full restoration. So I don't know if I think that makes sense. Yeah, it makes them all more like a pearl. Yeah, exactly. It can look cool, I don't know, but like it, it just defeats the purpose, you know? Like I do think it it kind of defeats the purpose. That's the matte plus Menchie hair. It kind of looks like brushed stainless steel. I don't know, it's a little, it's a little weird for me. I, I just, this is alone. And I also think last time I, I definitely overstated or like was a bit misleading about how like Glossy Taco makes it you know, um, like takes away the shine. <laughs> I feel like I'm always trying to make sure that the customer has as much information as possible and we're like the most transparent, that sometimes maybe I overdo it. So like a lot of people have come out since using it and be, and have said like the glossy taco, like it still looks fine, it's still shiny. 
<laughs> and I'm like, yes, it does. But I just wanted to make sure that people kind of knew it, it might slight, like just like a little bit take away from the chrominess. But so I gave that caution. But I think people interpreted that caution as like, oh, it's going to kill the chrome. It won't look good. There's no point. When like that wasn't true either, but you know, just me being overly cautious and trying to give the most information. I gave too much information. So I do appreciate all the swatchers and people who received it in PR and are just kind of like doing tests for the people. Shout out to shout out to the people doing tests for the people. We appreciate you and um, other consumers, users appreciate you because I do think it's really important to have uh, you know, impartial people out there using the product, saying whatever they want. And I think sometimes people do like a better job of explaining than I can all the time. Like I, I can't explain everything all the time. And I do think it's really valuable to have other people like testing out combinations, testing out, does it work over this base code or whatever. So I've definitely seen a lot of that on Instagram and really appreciate those people providing feedback. <laughs> people for the people. Yeah. Shout out to the people. <laughs> You gave accurate information. It's not your fault people misinterpret. No, but I think there's some truth to like sometimes overstating cautions. You know, if you overstate a caution too much, people will get really worried about it. Like another one is how long it lasts. We made sure to be transparent that this product, this type of formula may not be as long lasting as like, you know, the average linear hollow or creme, for example, because that is just true. The formula is just like that it's just like very slick and chromey and when you have a formula like that it might be more prone to like chipping over time or kind of like wearing off over time but I think people misinterpreted that as like oh it's only gonna last a day instead of like seven and like that's probably not true either <laughs> I think it, it does it will last longer than a day for most people but it, it's just user experience. It varies based on prep work. It varies based on how you use your hands and your lifestyle. It varies based on how virgin your nails are, which is just a measure of how raw they are. So like mine are extremely raw, right? So like my nail polish can last like basically forever, but that's me. Here, I wanna show you this too, hold on. I think this was really interesting because I, I peeled this nail polish lid. I'm sorry that I peeled it already. I know it's going to be a TikTok, okay? But when I peeled this spill lid, you can really see what type of a different formula it is. So I thought this was really interesting because when I peeled it off, like it's very thin as opposed to like when I do a hollow glitter spill or a linear hollow, it's going to be thicker. And this feels like almost like aluminum foil. Here, I want to give you just a little bit of, of audio. I don't know if you hate that or love that. Okay, maybe you hate it, I'm sorry. But I wanted to, I just thought it was interesting to kind of demonstrate in a weird unconventional way how this is a different formula than usual. It's, it, it's more like aluminum foil. <laughs> and I think it kind of explains a little bit of the difference in how it applies, how it sits on the nail, how quickly it dries, because this lid dried extremely quickly and it peeled off like a piece of foil. Do it again, you liked that? Okay, weirdos, here. <laughs> you want me to pause the music? Okay, get ready. <laughs> Okay, but there you go. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Like it's such a a very different fragile formula, I guess. <laughs> Look how shiny the bag is, yeah, because the, the back always gets shiny. I don't know what it is about the science of when it hits the yogurt lid. Anyways, you will see this peely in a future TikTok. <laughs> yeah, it's not as flexible. It is when it's wet, but when it dries, it's got to dry and go slick. Like, it's just like a, a slick piece of foil on your nails. 
Have you considered taking advanced chemistry to learn more about it? Yeah, like I, right now, yes, guys. You know what? I'm gonna stop streaming and I'm gonna go back to chemistry school. How's that? I already, I still remember the first 20 elements of the periodic table, so I think I'll do well. <laughs> Get the tape. I have another one. I, I, I usually spill more than one lid, so I have another one in my in my uh, office. <laughs> Does that formula affect the way it decals? Good question. So I did test this. This is really dry. I spilled this like three weeks ago. So, and this happens with all nail polishes, honestly. When I spill something so long ago, it becomes harder to peel because it gets like too dry and, and hard. But if you make decals and you peel it up within, you know, like an hour of it drying, it's very, it's flexible, it's fine. So. It, it, it's kind of the same way for other nail polishes too. So if you're gonna make decals with any nail polish, I still recommend p peeling that decal like the same day, just a couple uh, like hours after, sometimes even like half an hour and it's dry. But don't wait like three weeks, because if you wait three weeks, this, this will happen. Oh my God, crunchy. <laughs> Weird, okay, okay look. <laughs> it's literally like foil, what the heck? Okay. Anyways, I just thought this was an unconventional way to demonstrate how it really is like a different beast of a formula. Okay, I found Colette's things. Thank you, Ban. This is Colette's water Dude, marble. Show us, show us, show us. Look, she water marbled with it. Oh my god. Uh, that's so shiny. What is. I thought like putting any formula, is, well, this one specifically in wa in water would make it less shiny for some reason. I don't know. Like as it floats and, and it dissipates on the water. Good night, Liz Pool. Thank you for hanging out. That looks so good. I mean, good. Damn, Colette. Okay, so this is her live stream, so you can watch her actually do it. Wow, that's so good. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. We got, a few, we got a few actual bubbles in the design. Oh, no. Yeah, the chrome formula is it's gonna show more like if you have a, a little dusty or a bubble for sure but wow amazing oh yeah okay she just like pushes them in it's so cool thanks ben for finding that that was my simple little pleasures yeah hi hannah obsessed with the chrome water marbles me too i'm just too scared to do it I'm just like, I'm not doing it because it will not look good. You know what I mean? Like, I'll let the experts do it. <laughs> yeah, the possibilities are awesome to be watching. But, you know, I'm going to let other people explore that. You don't need me to do all the nail art in the world. We've got other nail artists for that. So I've seen some stamping. I'd love to see some more. We've seen some water marbles. We've seen me peel this. Well, this was really important information you needed. <laughs> All right. So now, what nail art do I do? The first thing I want to do is try the gradient again. Because I saw someone do it. And it, it looked shiny. And I don't know how. Because, like, I didn't. Mine didn't look that way. But I'm gonna do it on my nail as opposed to this. And let's just see, I'm, here, I'll try it on my thumb to give us time to decide what, what to do on my other hands. My other nails, not my other hands. This is my other hand. It will not be painted. What's on my other hand? Pinky swear you won't tell anyone. Okay, thanks. So let me just grab, <laughs> this is from Julian, I guess. Mm. 
NDAs in the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. How close in color are the gold chrome and gold flake topper? So they're different. They're, they give off different vibes. I'd say the Trophy Life is more like a pale yellow gold. And Gold Flake Taco is a deeper, very warm gold. So different vibes. Here, here's frozen bananas. Frozen bananas would be a little bit more saturated than Trophy Life. But just remember, in the bottle, all the chromes are going to look a little bit more silver than, than how they apply on the nail. And that's just because the pigment kind of looks chromier stuck to the sides of the bottle but on the nail it's going to be a little bit more like like the color but yeah that's how they compare frozen bananas but i think you know what you're asking are you asking this because i already did this <laughs> where is it where is it okay look i don't know if you were here last week but i, I did show you guys this so this says Trophy Life with Silver Flag Taco on top and then basically the inverse, World's First with Gold Flag Taco. Just thought that was so cool. Here, let me just shield this light for a second. Right? Like opposites? I just thought it was so fun. <laughs> Combos! What are your thoughts on the Holo Taco retirement collab? We had a lot of fun sending the polishes to Shady Acres to live out their shelf life. I saw that. Where did I see that? On Instagram? Someone did a retirement collab. There was also like a Party One Purple collab. Amazing. I love that. So now I'm just cutting this sponge. It's just a nail art sponge that I reuse just by chopping it off. I should probably just chop that off. And then yeah, I'd just throw that out. And I have my protective peel. But what I'll do is, okay, so first I would take my quick dry base coat, which is the new base coat that was designed and formulated to be used with the crumbs because it gives it uh, Yes, it, it's quick dry as the name suggests, but it also dries down with like a bit of a slick grip, if that makes sense, because it's meant to anchor the chrome formula. It lets the chrome formula fall into it nicely, so it's as shiny as possible. It also helps grip the chrome formula a bit better so that it has, has staying power more than if you didn't use this base coat. That doesn't mean it's like gonna make it last longer than like your average creme manicure but it just helps with this very specific special formula so I'm gonna try the gradient again on my thumb we're gonna try again so I'm just taking the quick dry base and I don't know who saw whoever's in hollow royalty and hollow swatcher got some uh, exclusive behind the scenes content earlier this morning by email and in that you might have seen Oops, sorry, got a little bit blurry. You might have seen how we were testing this base coat. And the first iteration of it, like it, it came clear, it began clear, but then in order to help differentiate it from like a glossy taco, we added the purple tint. So the purple tint, it doesn't do anything on the nail. Sorry, the music is too much. The purple tint isn't seen on the nail. It's purely cosmetic just to, well, I mean, this is all cosmetic. <laughs> it's nail polish, but uh, the purple tint helps differentiate it just so you like know what you're reaching for. You can't necessarily add a tint to like every single thing without it kind of disrupting the formula, but I'm happy we were able to add it to this. You saw the video, woo! When you have a natural orange gradient, I do, guys. I don't even need to do my nails. Look at this. It's grown out nicely, though. <laughs> it looks like Xyler. I was holding my naked nails in front of Xyler this morning, and I was like, look, I look like you. It's 
So you can see it already start to dry by the base because it's looking a little matte. The top is still needs a little bit to dry, but this this formula dries almost in about like um, like half the time as the average base coat, something like that. Not that like, you know, that's life changing, you know. Generally base coats don't take that long to dry anyways. And by the time you're, you're finished painting all five nails, like you're usually good to go back. Why buy this instead of the normal base coat? So this base coat was specifically designed to work with the chromes and th there's a lot of like you know chemists research and development people involved in this recommendation because you know there's chemistry to it that i'm not going to pretend i fully understand because i'm not a chemist but yeah in english <laughs> in the english words uh this base coat was specifically formulated for the chrome formula because the chrome formula just like lays down on the nail so differently. It really needs a slick surface that also has a little bit of grip in it to pull it in, but let it be smooth. It also needs to be really quick drying, whatever it goes on top of, because if you put it on a base coat that's a bit creamier or milkier, like a smoothing base coat, for example, they're gonna, they're not gonna behave well together. If like I tried it just just to see, even though the the chemists were like, don't do that. I was like, I want to see. <laughs> but like, if you put this over smoothing base or any creamy base, it, to my understanding, it kind of picks it up again. It like rewets it because the chrome really needs something that's like absolutely dry and not gonna uh, conflict with the chrome once the chrome hits it and rewets it. So it really does matter the performance of your chromes, uh, what base coat you put it over. And it's all related to chemistry. This is a live I never thought I would see. Why? Why? When, you never thought I'd do nail art? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you guys are welcome to experiment. Try it over smoothing base if you want. Try it over long lasting base. I'm just telling you that, that there, there is a reason for this because we wanted to make sure that customers had the best experience using the new chrome polishes. So that's why when you buy the collection box, which is still available, I know. Shout out to the team. We still have the collection box in stock. Woo! When you buy the collection box, it comes with the base coat, not like physically in the box, just with it. So no one's confused. Okay, so now that this is dry, because I definitely talked past two minutes, it has a little bit of tack to it, a little bit of like sticky stick. I, you're not supposed to, to do this. I wouldn't touch it repeatedly because now I'm just like putting body oils back on it. <laughs> but here, now I'll put one layer of chrome down. I'm using World's First, which is the silver one. Painting in the air is hard. I don't know how Instagram girls do it. Like, what are you doing? How do you paint in the air? Okay, I have a tiny bit of cleanup. There you go, one coat, baby. She said what she said. I'm just getting my acetone. So now I'm gonna take protective peel to protect the skin while we do a blendy, blendy, wendy.
I don't know how people do their thumbs in the air. Like, I'm just not good at it. <laughs> I'm a middle finger, flat on the desk girly. <laughs> Hold on, I lost the music. Do we like this music or we can go back to chill music? So with protective peel, since we're here, I like to put on like a lot. I find the thicker you lay it on, the easier it is to peel off. Make sure to make sure it's on tight so it doesn't dry out. Liquid latex dries very easily. Chill tunes, okay, we're back to chill. Meant she wanted the chill, she, she told me I heard her. Oh, we've got some new nail art. Hold on, you guys are sharing it. This is so good, Emmy, Emmy love. Wow, okay, so that, that looks like black with a, a dry brush effect with the chrome. See, so like easy, you know? I imagine this is like the, the, the dry brush technique, but it just looks so good. Okay, what about this? What's this one from Josie? Josie, that's so good. Kind of similar concept. We've got matte black and then painted circles in the chrome. That looks trippy. I'm just going through the Simply Discord. What about this one? Aqua Brandy? Aqua Brandy, these are so nice. Oh, I love this style of, of a dot cure. It's, it's a really trippy technique where it's like one color than the other. There's another picture in the sun. That looks so cool. Doing a quick look, see, seeing if there's more chrome. Oh, there's another one. This is from Rayleigh. A water marble. Woo, water marbles. I know people just started getting it, so it's like not really fair to be like, where's your nail art? <laughs> where's your nail art? <laughs> but, you know, as they come in, definitely check out the Manny Gallery. In the Simply Nailogical Discord. Oh shit, oh I've seen these, for nailing painting. These are, are on Instagram. This is so cool, using like a complimentary creme. Look at that, like such a simple nail art, but it just looks so good and futuristic because you have the contrast of the really shiny chrome with the flat creme. I think she put a matte taco as well on top of the creme. Just like amazing. So I, I think that's kind of the trick here is with chrome polish or something really shiny like this is you don't have to do an intricate complicated nail art with like you know painting someone's face or something for it to look really striking it's just the simplicity of it you could do like a french tip an angular french tip a swirl down the middle you could do line work with the chrome something like that just very simple and it's look really striking I saw another one that was like floral nail art. Uh, I think I reposted it on my Instagram stories, like over a naked nail. How about this one from Jess? That's cute, just so cute. Look, like very simple. And then add a little couple dots to be like little flowers, kind of matches her ring. So cute. Yeah, I think that's like one of my favorite things about this collection is like, you know, you don't, you can do cute things. I mean, you can wear it alone, but you could also do nail art with it that doesn't need to be that talented. <laughs> or you know what I mean? Like it doesn't need to be like amazingly intricate because the polish just kind of speaks for itself. And then we just have some, some regular application. This is from African Girl. Love that. We have this one from J Hedge, little Skittle Manny. What about this one? Mm. From McDizzle. Very cool. I'm still seeing lots of hollow barista manis in here. <laughs> I know, I still love that collection too. But yeah, now my brain is on Chrome.
Will it hurt the formula at all if it was left to freeze outside for eight hours? Um, I mean, I hope not. So <laughs> when you're receiving any nail polish in cold temperature, I recommend bringing it indoors and letting it warm up to room temperature without using like heaters or anything. Just like put it on your desk in your house and let it fully warm up, like wait a full day so that if there was any weird, you know, freezing, it kind of dissipates. But of course, if you have any issues, like please reach out to customer service. But the best rule of advice is to not open your polishes and start using them when they're cold. So if you feel the bottle when you get it in the mail, if it's cold, don't use it yet. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to be like, don't use it. But just let it sit on your desk and like warm up to like normal room temperature before you open your nail polish. Just got my polish right now. Now I can paint with you. Woo, let's go, Mel. That's very exciting. Okay, this has been dry for like ever. See, very dry. Now, I'm gonna try a gradient, but I don't know if it's gonna work because when I tried it earlier on my own, it just didn't work. It's like the sponge stipples into the chrome and it disrupts its shiny layer. That's, I, I mean, like it kind of makes sense to me when I think of the composition of the formula that once you like start poking at it, you're gonna disrupt its shine because it really needs to be laid down slick and smoothly so that it dries and it gets that shine. So I'm not surprised that a gradient, you know, by activating it with the sponge kind of ruins it, but I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. I need to know again. It barely takes any time to dry. Wow, yes. The, I could say this with confidence, the quickest drying nail polish color that Holo Taco currently sells is the chrome because the formula just goes dry in like two seconds. Well, maybe not two seconds, but <laughs> not two seconds, don't quote me, but it's like extremely fast drying. It's just the nature of the formula and you can tell when it's dry once it gets really shiny because here, why don't I just demo that? I'll do it with the color so it's a little bit more obvious. Like watch. Paint, I'll paint here. I'm just pointing where I'm painting. Okay, see how it's it's not shiny yet? It's it's pearly. It's pearly. So when you first apply it, so when you see our swatches, it's gonna be a little bit like like more metallic-y pearly, but you have to let it sink or dry or get slick or I, I don't know, you know? It has to work its magic and then you'll see it change and I'll be like, oh, now it's like more shiny. So here, I'm just gonna put it down so I can hold it steady. And just keep in mind, this is being applied over a regular swatch wheel. I, I'm not it's not over quick dry base on your nail. So on your nail, it's gonna be a l even shinier. Oops, sorry. But like, here's my nail. I'm trying to get my nail in the same frame. <laughs> okay, so just give it like a minute or two. I find by the time I'm done painting each nail and like, oh yeah, I take my time, make sure it looks good. And then I come back around like it's dry. You guys are literally watching paint dry. Cheers. It dries so fast, it was hard to do a quick cl cleanup. Yes, I recommend cleaning up the sides of your nails if you go out, out of bounds, like pretty much immediately. Are pearl and chrome not the same thing? Good question. So in the pigment land, I would say no. I'd say that chrome polish, you know, the polish that like once it dries down, it does look shinier. Like, you know, maybe not like a true mirror, but reflective, generally speaking. Uh, those pigments are very different than the pearl ones. With pearlescent pigments, you can kind of see them. If you like look really closely, you see tiny little dots, like the size of the pigment is a bit bigger, I think. I, I don't know, I'm just like <laughs> kind of imputing knowledge right here. 
but the chrome you don't really see the size like you can't narrow down each you can't point to be like there's a pigment there's a pigment there's a pigment because it kind of just looks like one foil once it's put together but with a pearlescent pigment you 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 do i find like at least in nail polish like a lacquer where it's painted on where it's a different story if we're talking about powders but if we're talking about nail polish it's painted on I find you will see like the little bit of pigment and uh, Julian's Great is a good example of that because that was a little bit more like, I know we called it metallic, but I think technically there's like a pearlescent, like a black pearlescent pigment in there. And if you look really closely, you can see the little pigments. So it, they behave differently. They have different opacity, that's for sure. So what's more shiny, chrome or pearl? Chrome, for sure, chrome. Is there a difference between duochrome and normal chrome? Yes, there is. So duochrome or multi-chrome, people sometimes use that interchangeably, is this. So multi-chrome or duochrome shifts in colors. So there's like two dominant colors. I don't know if my, my uh, right now I have beauty guru going on here. But you, there, you can kind of see how there's like two colors. Like, do you see the green one? It shifts to purple. That's mist shift. Multichrome or duochrome have shifts in them. So the color changes depending on the angle of the light. Do you see how they also have a little bit more like sparkliness to the pigment? The pigment is different than chrome in so many ways, not just because they shift, but of how they kind of uh, layer and get put together. I find these look a little bit like shimmerier and they are buildable. They take two to three coats to get opaque compared to the chromes, which are just one coat, layer it on, and it's like almost like a foil and you can't see the tiny particles. See how you can kind of see like just like the tiny bits of shimmer even though it's not shimmer, but I'm just, I'm using words that like we can maybe all align on like, yes, I see what you mean, but it's not, it is not shimmer. <laughs> but do you see the tiny little pigments in there? Like you can t see them, but like I can't see them in the chrome. So it's not the same formula. It's not like one is a shifting version of the other. Th they're not even close. They behave so differently. They dry down differently. They're different when they build up and they have different wearability. So it's it's not even the same category. It's not like you go to a pigment maker and you're like, give me that, but make it shift. They'll be like, no, no, no. I mean, you want a different pigment, miss? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, this is dry now. <laughs> so if you kind of uh, rewind back in this stream, you'd see how when I first painted this, it looked more like um, like wet chrome look, so it didn't look slick and shiny yet. And now it's totally dry. Doo -doo -doo. Like I can tap it. Here. So dry I can tap it with my nail and I'm not getting any dents. Not that I recommend you just do that on purpose because like you might dent it, you know, if you're not careful enough. This was also painted without any base or anything else, so I don't know. But yeah, dries down very differently than the average nail polish and you don't need glossy taco for it to behave like a quick dry. So I think maybe that's something I should do a better job of explaining. So with the one coat chromes, you can wear them without glossy taco if your main concern is like nail denting or you know, you get smudge marks when you go to bed. Generally speaking, you would always put a glossy taco on your nail polish so that it gives you that quick dry sealed in finish so that like if you go to bed, you know, you, and you, you're sleeping near your bed, obviously you're sleeping near your bed sheets, what? <laughs> but like you won't get those imprints in your nails because you put a glossy taco on. With the chromes, it's not necessary because they just do that already. Like you don't need a glossy taco. However, if you want longer wear and you, constantly expose your hand to like dishwashing the elements, you open packages for a living or just regular, whatever it is, then Glossy Taco will absolutely help give you that durability boost to carry your Manny longer than if you didn't have a Glossy Taco. 
So it's like you don't need it for the quick dry purpose because like you you could go on and shine just like this. But maybe you want the glossy taco if you want to, you know, carry this mani longer into the future. That's all. And it like it dulls it but like this much. I think I overstated its dulling effect. It does a little bit. It kind of immediately when you paint it on. Here, why don't we just do it now? That uh, oops. <laughs> Didn't listen to my own advice. Here, I will just show you. And then we'll get back to nail art. <laughs> <laughs> just avoiding the nail art. <laughs> okay. So that's pink steel one coat. And this is glossy taco. When you first swipe it, it does look like it's killing the shine. So that's why in my demo, I was being very transparent that like, yes, when you first apply the glossy taco, it is gonna dilute the shine a little bit. Here, I'll just do like this so you can see it. But if you wait, if you give it one or two minutes, it kind of refreshes and it doesn't look as bad as when you first applied the glossy taco. I don't know how that works, but like that's what happens in all my experiments. Do you need a UV light for the nail polish? Nope. All of our nail polish is regular nail polish, meaning that there is no UV gel lamps curing required at all. It's just nail polish that dries with time and air. So you're not exposing yourself to the UV lights or different technology that a gel nail polish requires. And when I say gel nail polish, I mean like real gel nail polish, not drugstore brands that say it's like they're gel, gel glaze and it's like not actually gel polish, it's just marketing. <laughs> real gel polish requires curing under a lamp. It's a totally different chemical formula Regular nail polish does not require a lamp. I'm gonna add a glossy taco on this because I think maybe that might help blur and blend a little, but like it, it doesn't look as bad as when I first tried it, but it is less chromey than before. I get that there. Like, it's okay. I don't know. I feel like it, it looks better in your mind when you think about a gradient of chromes than it turns out, but whatever, I had to try. Okay, we won't do that again on the other nails. Yeah, the chat can stop arguing about it now, but do you see how it's it's hard when people keep keep wanting to argue? Stop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> people are very passionate, I understand. Okay, let's get passionate about this mediocre nail art. Oh, I missed a spot in the thumb. That's good. All right. I think um hmm. Yeah, the colors seem less saturated with the sponge for sure. But it does, I think the glossy taco helped make it a little bit shiny, but it's still not looking like that slick chrome because we dabbed it on with a gradient sponge, you know? So, you know, I mean, like you could try it. I saw someone do it and it like looked so chro chromey. I don't know how they did it. So what else can I do? All right. I have a couple options here I kind of like this 
doing a nail like this, or maybe we could do a couple different nails. I want to try this, but do a better job of it than I did on this wheel with a couple of the colors. I think we could easily do a dotted cure and then I'd like to do a line work. What if I do a Skittle Manny of a couple of different things? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, I just, I made up my mind for me. <laughs> so, hmm, I think the accent nail should be this one. So that'll be a black base. So on the black base nail, I'll just put down a regular base coat. I'm just gonna put down if you do too many strokes, can you fix it with a second coat? Uh, yes, you can. You don't, okay, so one coat chrome is designed to be opaque in one coat, but you can do a second coat. Just make sure that when you go in for the second coat, you're doing it once your first coat is fully dry and you'll know that just by like tapping gently on the nail because you don't want to stroke the nail while it's wet or else you'll just pick it up, you know? You can see the particles more in the gradient. That's a great way to put it, yeah. Because we disrupted the particles by like stabbing them repeatedly. By 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 stippling, stippling, what, what is it, that word? Where you like kind of interrupt the paint process. That kind of makes sense that we've disrupted the chrome shine. So I just put, um, Smoothing base on this nail because I'm gonna go in with one coat black here as my accent nail and on the other nails Let's do the quick dry base because I'm gonna do a chrome layer first and we'll just kind of figure out what we're gonna do there Can you do a vinyl with chrome? I'm sure someone has. I think I'm gonna do some freehand stuff though, cause I'd like to kind of show, uh, you know, how it, how it moves. I think the chrome formula is also really good cause it like moves easily. What's on my other hand? Pinky swear you won't tell anyone about this unreleased creme. Okay, so I'm thinking we're gonna do a nail like this. A nail like this. Let's do one dotic here one. And then we'll see how it goes. glass nail so that video is coming out tomorrow on the hollow taco youtube channel i made a proper nail art video it will come out tomorrow on the hollow taco youtube so okay let's go ahead here i've got one coat black it's all about the one coat polishes today i'm gonna apply that on this nail hmm, dry enough
Oh no. Just a little cuticle clean up. Always the worst with such a pigmented creme. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just using my cleanup brush dipped in acetone. I like to use 100% cosmetic grade acetone when doing my cleanup because I find it's just the most effective at dissolving the paint and giving me that kind of clean line as opposed to traditional nail polish remover which is often diluted with different oils or something to like be a bit more nourishing that's fine if you're just like removing your nail polish but when you're doing this cleanup if you dip the bristles in a an oil base like a, a nail polish remover with oils and stuff you're putting that into the polish maybe by accident so it can kind of disrupt it so just using the straight up acetone as long as it's cosmetic grade um, just tends to work more effectively how come the live streams for nail art aren't done on og channel because i just decided that it made more sense to make a live streaming a thing on one channel you know so it's not confusing People on that channel didn't necessarily sign up for live streams because it's a different type of content. Now that is opaque, <laughs> yes. One cup of black is opaque. It has opacity level as, uh, opacity level 100 in one coat. And I'm just gonna use it as the base to do chrome nail art on top. So now let's pick what I'm gonna do with my other three nails. I'm thinking like a nail art combo thing. So, since we wanna make it balanced, I definitely wanna do one like this so I can use multiple colors for that. I wanna do a dot here, and I think a dot here would look best if I pick a color. So maybe let's do pink as the base with the dot here. And then I would do a black accent. And then we could do like silver on top. Yeah, let's do that. So black, pink, silver is a dot here. It's not exactly as I have here, but kind of. So let's do one that's pink. I'm gonna do the middle nail is gonna be this one. Sorry, this one, cause I'll have more space to do that. So let's make the dot here my pointer. The name one coat black sounds sheer to me. Okay. Ben, people wanted to move on, Ben. <laughs> Stop. Yo, I really hope people aren't like taking it the wrong way. You know, if you're genuinely confused, that's okay. Sometimes I just want to understand things, even confusion. I want to understand confusion. One coat of pink steel. You're always confused. Me too, silly munchkins. I feel like I log on to social media and I'm like, I'm confused. <laughs> How did I get here? Why did I come here? What was I gonna do here again? How do I get out of here? Constantly confused. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do here? <laughs> ben is always encouraging the chaos. I know, have you seen his live streams? Simply just wants to understand how humans work. Yeah, one day I hope to become a human. You know, right now I've remained a machine, but I am constantly on a mission to understand the human mind. And I hope that you will help me understand the human mind. I appreciate your help in helping me comprehend the mind of a human. One day, my goal is to become human. For now, I am an AI chat bot who occasionally does nail art. If you ask me to do nail art, I will avoid the question. <laughs> uh, 
I respectfully request <laughs> that the chat be respectful in the chat. That the chat be respectful in the... Wow, I just realized you can use chat in different ways in the same sentence. Isn't that fun? Robot core, we could make that in. Christina's AI? No, she's a sock. What if I'm an AI sock all along and I just have different sock costumes to try on, you know? <laughs> I feel like Ben sounds like a word that means antagonism. I could totally hear that. Yeah, I feel that. The vibes, the vibes with the word Ben sound like a man who like likes taxes, you know? Likes to antagonize like the tax services or something. Like that's what it feels like. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> okay, look at that. Pink steel looks sexy. Now I'm gonna do, let's paint this nail in the purple one first and then I'm gonna do the other colors on top. This is iron violet. Just the application is just so good. It's just so delicious. It's so good that it looks like you you should be eating it, but you shouldn't, you know what I mean? That's an association I can get on board with, you know? When nail polish just looks so good, it looks like you should eat it. Mm -hmm. Don't eat the nail polish though. So on my pinky, what? that's the only one I haven't decided. Maybe we just do like a quick little dry brush. So maybe for that one, let's put down teal. Just I'm trying to make it balanced. Little crunch. Mmm. Kind of like, like this is like a little crispy. This is like a crispy taco shell. It's like, it looks like you should eat it, right? Like a crispy taco. <laughs> It is a hollow taco. It's a chrome taco. So we're gonna do this with aquafoil. Oh, I flooded it. Oh, I flooded the pool with aquafoil. because the wide brush is too thick for my skinny pinky. Simply, why does the polish look tasty to you? Because it looks like candy. It looks like um, those chocolate Easter eggs that are wrapped in tin foil, like the kind of pastel ones. And uh, those are tasty as a child. I grew up, you know, Easter egg hunts, and then I ate what was inside the foil. So that's why I have the association that like, it looks like I should be eating this. See? I hope that explanation made sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's the forbidden eggs do not eat okay um all right let me think about what i was gonna do next on i was gonna do a dot here on this guy so let's do that. Let me just take this yogurt lid that I peeled out of. And I'm gonna dot, I'm gonna make it look 3D. So I'm gonna do black. So I'm just throwing that down just cause it's easier to do it this way. Grabbing my dotting tools. Let's get the biggest one. So 
Here's my dotting tool. What's the biggest one? This guy looks like the biggest one. So let me just put it here. Nope. A little bit more black for so we can be fresh. And I'm just gonna, oops, here I'll just show you. I'm just putting it in and getting it really nicely coated, making sure it's a big, a big dollop. Actually, let's just stop there. Yeah, I like the, the big giant ones. And then I'm gonna let that just dry down a little bit because then I'm gonna do chrome dots on top of it, but slightly move it over by like a couple millimeters. So it'll look 3D. Kind of like here that I just did very roughly, but see how the one with the black and the pink kind of gives like a 3D look. So I'm gonna re repeat that, but just with slightly different colors on that one. So I'll let that dry. And now let's do some line work. Let's do some lines with, what if we do trophy life? And hmm, trophy life and maybe the pink, just so I can like tie the pink to this nail over. So I'm gonna take my striping brush I'm just gonna I'm gonna do one color at a time because it will dry up quickly. Look at that little chrome puddle. Woo! Shiny. You gotta work quickly with the crumbs because they it will start to dry in this lid. And then I'm just gonna saturate my striping brush. You can do a little practice round just like that. I'm just moving it off screen so I can do this. Then I'm gonna go like this. Gotta work quickly. I said quickly, Christine. We're just freehanding it. There, see, it's just like one coat, pretty easy. Because it's so opaque, you can do this kind of thing with it. I think maybe I'm gonna retrace one of them. There. Now I'm just rinsing this off so I can swap colors. And by rinsing it, I mean dipping it in acetone. I'll do a proper clean after stream, but this is just enough to like, you know, just get the color off, whatever, clean it. Gen like good enough just to switch the color. It's like when you change your, your eyeshadow brush, you know, it's like you're kind of getting it off, but not really. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna get uh, Trophy Life, my second color, and just do some added line work in there. Just to have a little bit of a compliment. Here, I'll show you that. Then I kind of just go like this, do the same thing, drag it on, make sure the brush is saturated so you're getting like a nicer line. And then now let's go back. And just kind of freestyle it.
I can't see that side of my nail. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Okay, there. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I didn't really do the tip, eh? Should probably just do like... Kind of. <clears throat> Whatever. I'm just gonna clean that off carefully. So we've just got some kind of random line work here just to kind of pull two colors together so it looks like they were meant to be, you know, on the same manicure. My shaky hands would never. So my, I have shaky hands, like you can kind of tell, especially when I'm doing thumbs in the air. Like <laughs> I can't do shit in the air. I need a, a table to lean on. I think like most people can relate to that. But I find if you have, if you have shaky hands and you want to do nail art, I think it's a lot easier to work with a long skinny brush, like a striping brush, because you can drag it easier. So once you, you can like go like this, you can drag it. Whereas if you're using a shorter brush, just pretend this is a nail art brush, it's harder to keep that steady because you can't drag it for as long in the same pl place. So personally for freehand work, I prefer doing like straighter curvy lines with a long skinny striping brush because I feel like it it's easier to pull. <laughs> So I'm gonna do a little bit of a dry brush on this guy. I'm kind of feeling like, let's just try a dry brush. I'm a little bit inspired. So what if I do a little bit of black actually? Yeah, just like, he okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's see if it'll work. I'm gonna take my way too opaque black and I'm gonna get it off. So it's just a little bit on the brush, just enough for like, a bit of a dry brush. And now let's see if this works. I have like nothing. Okay, that, that was not enough. Kind of looks like splatter. Okay, I'll stop before I cut, or maybe I'm gonna do this side. Okay, there, that's, that's just enough there, okay? Kind of like grungy, kind of cool. Right, just to tie it into the others. I actually kind of like that, why does that look good? We saw the opposite on someone who I shared earlier on stream. Yeah, I could have just used the fan brush, but sometimes I'm lazy, honestly, just like whatever, just wipe off the existing brush. It kind of looks cute, but now I'd like to just tie it in a little bit closer and I'm gonna do the same thing with the silver chrome because it would be the most contrasty with aquafoil. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and just kind of like get it off, look, there's so much. Get it off the brush, get off the brush. There. She's too opaque. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of use the black That's so nice. Wow. I should have done a bigger nail. Okay, I like that. And then I will stop. That's cute. I like it, it's like grungy. A little bit of black on the base to kind of elevate it, give it a little bit of 3D-ness. 
Okay, now we're let's do the dot here since I have the worlds first. And I'm just gonna take worlds first. Fresh new little puddle. You gotta have a fresh puddle before you go in. Just make sure you have enough and it's fresh because it does dry very fast. I'm gonna take the same size dotting tool. Some people use smaller. I just like to use the same size. And I'm gonna dip in, get it fully covered. You gotta work quickly. Quicker than me, I was talking too much. And I'm gonna place it on the same location of the black dot, but slightly over. Let that kind of dry and flatten down, but see how it has like a three, it's like a shadow. That's how you make shadows. And because the dotting tool is already a circle, it's a lot easier to use this technique to create a shadow, just do like one layer than the other, rather than freehand painting a circle. Cause good luck freehand painting a circle with a shadow, that perfect. Okay, you need to be talented nail artist to do that. <laughs> this is the the regular person hack to do the same effect. So just let that kind of dry. And now let's go ahead and tackle this nail. So my goal is to do the cascading coats, one on top of the other. Now with this one, I have more room because these swatch wheels are very wide compared to my nails, but I'm Gonna try and do something like this. We'll see how many layers we can get. Kind of a great Gatsby, like arches, chrome arches look. So let me just open all my colors. So I don't need the iron violet again, cause we already used it. I don't think I'm gonna get all five. That might be a little bit of overkill trying to do them all, but let's see how many I can get. Cause it's gonna get like too skinny in the middle. So let's do trophy life next. So you'll see what I mean once I start doing it. There, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Just one coat, let it dry, let it settle. So what I've done is I've basically created an inverse French tip, a cuticle tip with iron violet just by painting trophy life on top in the middle. And because these chromes are all one coat, like I could do that. This would not be possible with another, uh, you know, like a linear hollow of this color because the coverage is just, it's gonna need two to three coats for opacity. That's just the nature of other formulas. But with the chromes, it doesn't matter if the color is like silver, which in any other pigment universe would probably mean that, you know, it's gonna need more coats. So I really like these for nail art for this reason, cause like I don't need to worry about which color has to be the base because I'm limited by the opacity <laughs> of the colors. You know what I mean? The coverage keeps shocking me no matter how many times I see it. I'll keep showing you BB shrimp. So with this technique though, if you're layering chromes on top of chromes like this, or even over the black, you just wanna make sure it's dry. Cause if you, if I went back like too early, I'm gonna pick it up and I wanna make sure each layer, it's like Polish Mountain. Okay, you remember when we went to Polish Mountain? When I first tried Polish Mountain, I did a layer and then I like was impatient. I'm like, I'm gonna keep going. And then it just got so wet and it piled up. Yeah, we don't want that. So you have to make sure it's dry in between each coat. How did you do that with one stroke? Um, a little bit of practice, not gonna lie. You know, I think with practice, you can kind of get good at that. But this formula means you don't have to go back. I mean, you can, like if you want to perfect something, but like here, like it's just kind of practicing. Like if I just want to do right here. Oops, my hand like hit the bottle, right? 
my hand. <laughs> the bottle was like by my knuckles. Uh, but yeah, it's just practice. Also the wide brush in these means you're gonna have a wider coverage area. So depending on the size of your nail, like I wouldn't really be able to do this on my pinky. It'd be much trickier. And watch, it's gonna get trickier as I try and make it smaller. I'm gonna do my best like not to flare the brush out on the next step, but it's gonna get harder. So like I could just switch to the other brush, but I don't have a polish that's saturated in the bristles right now. And I recommend if you're, if you use our re replacement brushes, like we sell the wide brush and the simply skinny brush in a six pack. So you can just, you can get that as a replacement brush for any reason. If you want to swap the brush type or whatever, it comes with the cap. So there's no assembly required, just throw it in. But like you could, if you want, you could, you could purchase the simply skinny brush pack, throw it into the chromes, which come with the wide brush. And then you could do what I'm trying to do. It's a very specific situation, but that's the wide brush. But whenever you get new, new bristles, they should be saturated in the polish, meaning like sitting in that bottle for some time before you go use it. Cause if you just dip in a dry brush and then try and use it, it's going to be too stiff. It's, it's like the glue and the natural resin in the bristles needs to be broken down by the polish. And that happens, you know, if you just leave it in. But yeah, so I don't know if I could do that now because it would like not apply, it'd be too stiff. So this looks dry to me. Bloop, bloop, yep. So I'm gonna go in with a different color. Let's do aquafoil and then I could end with world's first maybe. I don't need the pink because I have two pinks here. Okay, let's try. Everyone hold your breath. I'm gonna try because this is the thick brush. <laughs> oh, okay, we did it. We did it and it, and it looks good. Oh, 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 I kind of flared it out a little too much at the end. Okay, that's me like not pressing down as heavily, right? So I'm flaring the brush less cause I'm just like more gently floating it. <laughs> we got one more chance. And maybe if I turn the brush kind of on its side, I could do the last one. But like, this is really cool. Like how easy is this? If you can hold your hand steady. <laughs> just make sure it dries. And then we're, and then I'm gonna, yeah. I would definitely add a glossy taco to any polish that has more than just the chrome. Cause like one coat black, you don't want that to just be around without a glossy taco, like any nail polish except for the chromes. So I'm, I am gonna put a glossy taco on all these at the end. But what a cute Skittle this is turning out to be. What a cute opaque Skittle. <laughs> yeah, you can turn the brush on your side for, yeah. I will turn the brush on the side for the last one. It's a good idea. You love the vibes on the ring finger. We should do a poll of what's your favorite thingy. Here, I'll just do that while I let this dry. Bye, Menchie. Typing with one hand, like. What do we call the ring finger? It's like a line work, swirly lines. Swirl line work. Middle is like uh what 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 what, na what name should we invent for this it's like a cascading inverse french tip that's too long <laughs> cascade i'll just call it a cascade and then pointer is dotic here i'm gonna skip the thumb since we only have four options susan 
So go ahead and vote. What's your favorite of these four? We got the pinky dry brush technique, ring swirl line work, middle cascade, I'm calling it, and pointer the dotic here. This is like a 3D dotic here. See how the silver has dried down now? It looks cute, I like it. And you could do that with smaller dots, with a different color as the shadow. And any nail art I did here, you can like switch around the colors, but I do really like the contrast of the, the chromes with one coat black. I think that contrast is like, there's something like elegant, sexy, uh, stunning about it. And that's what you'll also see in tomorrow's video <laughs> that's going up on Olo Taco, the stained glass chrome look. That's just combining the one coat chromes with one coat black. And it's kind of got these vibes, but uh, the opposite where like the window is the chrome. I didn't include the gradient because like I didn't really think it turned out that well, to be honest. Can we get a close up? Yeah. Let's let's get a little closer. I, I really like the pinky. I just think it's different. It's kind of grungy, metallic. It reminds me of um, almost like a turquoise stone maybe with a bit more black flex than usual. And it's it's really easy to do. This kind of thing doesn't really re require talent and you can have a shaky hand. The only thing you have to worry about is making sure that you don't have too much on the brush. Just like really wipe that brush off on a yogurt lid or whatever, and then go in. This is the line work. Long striping brush required and just kind of like freestyling it. I didn't really have a plan. I'm just like, I kind of want the colors to criss and cross. And then we've got this, which I'm going to finish. I'm going to do another one, but this just looks cool. It kind of looks like a rainbow. <gasps> it looks like a rainbow bridge. Wider nails would definitely have way more opportunity with this. I have very skinny, narrow nails. I know it's hard to tell because uh, there isn't a reference category. Here, but like if you use these as a reference category, if you happen to have these swatch wheels at home, like look how much skinnier my middle finger fingernail is. Like, I don't know. I just have skinny little nails like my feet, long and skinny feet. And then here's the dot here, which is a simple technique, but I really like doing the 3D version here where you have the black underneath and then it kind of just ties it in with the rest. Okay, let's take a look at the poll results. Results. Thank you for voting. Your fave fingy. 52% like the ring finger. Interesting. So I think you guys pick like the hardest one. I assume this would be the trickiest for most people. But yeah, that's definitely an overwhelming winner. And we've got a, a somewhat split with the middle and the pinky. And no one likes the dotic here. <laughs> All right, okay, let's do the final challenge. I'm gonna take worlds first and try and paint a skinnier line in this cascade in the aquafoil. Ready? <gasps> Don't breathe. Oh, I kind of did too much. Oh, it's kind of lopsided! No! <laughs> At least we got a good shot of it before. Okay, let it dry down. Menchi, get your hair out of here. Let it dry down. Because, like, right now, it, like, I put it on a little thick. It's cute. Can you fix it? Not really. Like, yeah, no. You don't want to start going in there because then it'll just look not shiny, but just let it dry down. Maybe it'll look more balanced. You breathed. It's your fault, Aiden. You breathed. I did fly too close to the sun. You know, it looked great with just the three and I was like, no, I must do more. <laughs> of course I have to. <laughs> I'm jealous of people with like extremely wide nails because they could do like the entire collection of the five of them like this, like with the wide brush and it would probably look stunning. Like Abe the Nail Babe, where are you? <laughs> That's who should do this. 
<laughs> Wide nailies. Not me leaving work early because my chromes are out for delivery. Valid reason, right? Like, I'm not gonna argue with that, Celeste. I'm not your boss. No worries, just do more. <laughs> okay, now let's see. Let, let me let's get a close up of how that that one looks. Okay, like it's slightly more on one side than the other. Eek! Like, uh, see how it's too far on that side here. If I take off the shine, you can really see. <laughs> Like, I could try and fix it by painting a skinny line of aquafoil to even it out, but I do think you're gonna see that. And by see it, I mean like once you start painting in singular lines, you're gonna see it no longer look like that single wash of chrome layer. So it's, it's different than regular polish. Like if I was doing this with crumbs, I would totally just be like, okay, let me just outline that a little bit. But with the chromes, you, you kind of don't want to keep going back with it because you will see kind of like a bumpy difference. It looks like a jawbreaker. They look so good together. It's not too bad. Okay, maybe it's not too bad. We're just being crazy over here. What if I go further away? Huh? What about now? You don't even notice. It looks great. Okay, let's add a glossy taco. Got my glossy taco. Looks like a mirror. Do you see your soul? Let's go ahead and paint all the nailies. Except the thumb, because we already did the thumb. Now with any line work ones, or even the dotted here where the black was put on thick, I just wanna make sure I float the glossy taco. Sometimes I forget and then I do it and then one nail is like uh, like streaky or, or a little bit of bleeding, but then I remember on the other nails. <laughs> Stunning. Okay, I'm gonna do this guy last because I just painted him, just, just to be safe, although it does look like it's dry, but now let's do the dot here. So as we kind of experimented with earlier, when you initially put the glossy taco down on a chrome, it's gonna look like it's dulling a bit, but it kind of comes back Why not super? You can use super if you want, if it's available to you domestically in the US. I hate it when it bleeds. Yeah, the, the trick is just not pressing down with the brush. I think people kind of underestimate the power of floating the glossy taco, not just for smudging nail art, but also sometimes you don't even realize it. But if you really, if you're pushing down too hard with your bristles, and say you just even have a plain chrome or chrome, creme manicure, just like a regular creme manicure, you can kind of end up with like strict streakiness, like bristle marks in your creme manicure just because you push the taco down too much with the brush. So I think regardless of whether you have nail art or just a regular manicure, I recommend like just taking a little bit and then just like floating it on there, just, just float and let it be a little bit thick if it has to be and it kind of, it'll kind of settle. But floating is usually better. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the middle nail now. 
with a glossy taco. Not that that would have been necessary on this nail because there's actually no one coat black or other polish that requires a glossy taco to not get dented. But you know, just, it'll be weird if I like didn't, if, if imagine just like not putting glossy taco on one nail, that'd be weird. So can't do it. So let that sit for just a minute. And then we'll do a final, what do you think? Can you talk about how working in an auto body shop influenced you with this collection? I mean, I wouldn't say that um, my experience working in cars made me pick chrome. I think I've like, you know, chrome nail polish is a thing. But I think what is interesting is that I have seen the difference between car paints or paint designed for use for an industrial purpose versus cosmetic paints. So I feel like I have a, a, a different understanding because of my experience working in the car industry or just like knowing what those paints behave like. I remember I used to watch our painter at my dad's old body shop, like spray on different types of paints, including a chrome liquid mirror type paint. I talked about that in the, the world's first video about the nail polish. I talked about kind of that mirror chrome or whatever. And I think I remember even showing pictures of like the type of paint that we used to use in the body shop, but there are different paints for good reason, right? There's, you don't want car paint on your nails. But maybe you, you don't care if you have nail polish on your car. I did that once. <laughs> don't recommend that either though, because you never know, but. Minji's back. Ooh, hi. Minji, my nails are wet. You can say hi. I did a one coat chrome versus frosted metals video. Would love to know what my hollow family thinks. Thank you, me and my tea. That's something that I'm sure people would appreciate. We appreciate everyone making comparisons, testing, testing nail art and all these things. Menchie, what do you think? Look cute. What do you think? She likes it. Aww. She's purring. Hey, baby. Do you want to go to your bed? Oh, she's sneezing. Hi. Hi, monkey. Oh, don't eat my hair. She's trying to eat my hair. Stop. Stop. I wake up in the mornings and she's like... She's always trying to eat my hair. It's weird. Like, you have enough of your own hair, young lady. Get it out of your face. <laughs> what a little baby. Your order was just dropped off. Let's go. Get it, get it. I need to see all, all your nail arts. Also, there's a giveaway going on now on Instagram, just on Holo Taco's Instagram. We're giving away five signed boxes. Kind of like how I did on stream last time. It's the same round of boxes. But yeah, sent them back to the warehouse, so they'll be shipping those to the five winners. The giveaway is still live. You have to enter on Holo Taco's Instagram, but they're signed Chrome collection boxes. Hey, sweetie. Do you want one? I could, I could arrange that. Whatever she wants. I just Googled Volvo nail polish and I'm shook. Can I tell you that there once was a time that I thought I was gonna do a video on uh, reviewing car companies nail polish like mercedes-benz audi was it if volvo is one of them then i guess that's correct but i had purchased a couple but i one of them they like i bought it and then they just never delivered it to me so i never got it and i didn't have enough to make a video out of because i want i needed like at least three car companies who made nail polish <laughs> so i just never made the video because i never got enough of them but if you know of more car companies who currently sell nail polish, 
then I would love to. Because I think I have the Audi ones downstairs, but I just, I didn't have enough because Mercedes-Benz like stopped selling it or something. I have nothing special to say, but thank you for making fun nail polish. Thank you, Tifa. That's a very special thing to say. There are nail polishes from car companies? Yeah, so I don't think it's their car paint in the bottle because that would not be good or appropriate. But I think maybe what they do is they kind of match their red. So like they'll have their, you know, the company, whoever's making the polish for them kind of dupe their polish color. Maybe it's like a red metallic that is like an Audi red or whatever. It's just branding. Ford and OPI have a collab? They do? That's a, I would have never guessed that. I mean, after OPI made NFTs, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, so you can match your car. <laughs> okay, I gotta find it. Maybe I should buy it. If I can get two more nail polishes by car companies or collabs, I will make a stream on it. Hey girl. She's not, she's not, she's never leaving. Okay, yes, I know. Hi, sweetie. Why don't we, let's do a final, what do you think? Now that the glossy taco's dry. All right, everybody. What do you think? What do you think? See how the glossy taco has now settled a bit so it's looking chromey again? I don't think that the gradient looks the best. I mean, it's fine, but it's definitely more of a diffused chrome. So I probably would not, you know, try it again, but I, I really love this look. Like, this is so cute. Very skittle manny, very fun, shows you different things you can do with the chromes. And then there's many more things you can do with the chromes that I'm not gonna do, like water marble and stamping. If you're at that skill level, then I invite you to go ahead and do those things. Oh, what's this? Oh, we have a Discord user sharing some stuff. AZ Violet, thank you. They're doing them now. Very cool. Oh wait, did they try the exact same thing? <laughs> yeah, the gradient is hard. It doesn't really work, eh? Very cool. Thank you guys. Okay, she won't get off my lap. Hold on, let me close the acetone before an accident happens. Menchi, where's the cap? Uh oh, there it is. Here, I'm gonna back up so you can see her. I'm gonna read from here. Let's see how far I can read. We just wanted to say your streams make working on four papers at the same time much more doable. They take my mind off of the work for a while. Thank you, Marlene. Hope your paper's going well. Hey, sweetie. She's like, she's settled in. She's like, yeah, this is my lap now. This is my lap, mom. <laughs> hey. My little sweetie. This was fun. I had a good time with you guys, you know, just chilling. A little bit of tea. You need a Menchie clone? I will not give her DNA. Nail art made me think outside the box. Yeah, me too, Jessica. When I was playing around on the test wheel with these, I was like, you could really do so much here. And you can do a lot with less talent, if that makes sense. Because the coverage of the chromes is so opaque, 100% opacity. <laughs> then you have a bit more forgiveness because you don't have to go back a second time. Um, but you should practice. I would recommend. I, honestly, I feel like swatch wheels are a great thing to have. I think that they're fun to just see combos. You know, even if you're not into nail art, I love swatch wheels because you can just look at different holo taco combos. You can see what would happen if you put a matte taco on something. I have swatch wheels on my Amazon page, the specific ones that I use. I use the clear ones and the kind of whitish ones 
depending on what I'm testing. I like the look of the clear ones better on stream because they're see-through, but I will use the kind of whitish, um, opaque, not transparent ones when I'm testing opacity of polishes. <laughs> Man, she looks so plush. She's so cute right now. She's like a little meatloaf. Like, what are you doing? She's a little meatloaf. She got a chicky in the mouth, Menchie. Hi. She's like very in love right now, you know what I mean? She is very soft. And floppy. She's like a floppy disk, you know? Maybe that's what my computer is missing. I just got to put Menchie in my computer. Menchie, you're going to flop right in, okay? You little floppy disk. <laughs> I know, she's the real hero of this stream. Can I put you in your bed, sweetie? Hey, Simply, is Hollow Taco coming out with a nail oil? I'm working on it. I know, I've been saying that for years, but I am working on it one day. All right, everyone. I think that concludes this wonderful calming nail art stream. Do not spook the mench. I hope you guys had a good time, got some good ideas, and, uh, you know, didn't get too hung up on the definition of opaque. But... <laughs> But I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. We will resume Life is Strange Before the Storm Episode 2 on Wednesday. And yeah, do something else fun on next Saturday. All right, everyone. Thank you to the mods. Thank you to the Menchie gang. Thank you to the bands. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all later. Bye. <laughs>